Hey everyone, Ronnie Chavez here, and today we're going to be learning 10 parkour vaults for beginners. Now, you may have seen my previous 10 parkour move video that was 10 parkour moves anyone can learn, and maybe that video has started you on your parkour journey. Well, there's so many moves out there to learn, so we're going to do another 10 video, but on vaults. So, let's get started on the first vault, which I did in my last 10 video, but it's good to start off with this one, is the safety vault, because as it says in the name, the safety vault is all about safety and control. So once again, to do the safety vault, you can use one or two hands, and the main thing you're going to do as you clear over the obstacle is that you're going to use your feet to help con control your momentum going over. So I'm gonna bring my legs to the left side of my body, and I'm gonna use my left leg to kind of bring myself up on the rail and then carry my right leg through the middle between my arms and feet. You can go as slow as you like, just make sure that you don't clip your feet so you don't fall forward, especially if you're doing it on a handrail. Handrails are a little bit sketchier for learning vaults than if you have a flat ledge or, uh, or a soft object to learn in a gym, wherever you have to learn. But yeah, just remember, you're gonna plant that foot and bring your other foot through. What's awesome with the safety vault is you can use it to have speed and power. You can do great distance jumps into safety vaults if you don't want to do the more advanced diving Kong vault and things like that. It's also a great way to recover from precision jumps. So if you're doing a precision jump and you almost slip or trip, then you can use a safety vault to safely get out of it. The next vault we're gonna learn is the speed vault. Now the speed vault is very similar to the safety vault in motion, except you're not gonna be using your feet on the rail and you're only gonna be using one hand on the rail. The best way to think of this move is like you're trying to hurdle the obstacle very quickly and you're gonna be using your hand to help control that as you jump over it. And the beautiful thing with speed vaults is that you can also allow your body to be thrown more to the side than a typical hurdle or just a straight jump because you have that hand planted on the rail to push you back onto your feet. So my favorite way to do the speed vault is to jump off the same leg I'm gonna be planting with my hand. That way I can almost get like a kicking motion in the air and then kick back to land on my left leg which is going to allow me to land in a fast run. So progressing from this basic motion we're doing right now, kind of this sideways vaulting motion, our next vault is going to be the turn vault, which is perfect when you need to get over an obstacle without completely clearing it. You just want to get on the other side of it to either drop down or incorporate some flow. So this is the turn vault. Now in doing the turn vault, you can also do it one-handed like the speed vault or plant a foot like the safety vault. There's a lot of variations. You can flare your legs out. The main thing is that you have your planting hand facing backwards so that as you're rotating and turning your body over, you can rotate without twisting your hand up. And then the main thing is to just make sure you're pulling your feet back to where you want to land and you're spotting your landing so that you don't miss your feet and potentially clip your shins. So this is a good move to practice on flat ground on a vault and then once you get consistent with where you're landing with your feet and feel confident with it, then you can try doing it on a ledge where you, it's gonna be a little bit more of a challenge, but it's gonna be a proper turn vault. The next vault is a variation of the turn vault, which is the 360 vault. This vault isn't so much about practicality as it is about just style and flair, incorporating into free running lines and just gaining overall body control. So the 360 vault we're gonna do just like the turn vault. You're gonna take off the same way, have one hand turned, your supporting hand flipped around so that you can get that initial turning motion. And then as you're going over, instead of focusing on planting your feet back where you came from, you're actually going to keep rotating your hips and chest and almost pop your hips out to get that extra rotation and then push away to land facing forward again. You can experiment with this a little bit by doing one hand again or by flaring your legs out, whatever you want to try to have fun. It's all about creativity and exploring what your body can do. 
the fifth vault that is perfect for beginners is going to be the lazy vault. Now this vault's a little bit different than the previous vaults where most other vaults are all about hitting an object straight on, but sometimes you don't have that option and you just need to get over an object that you're running next to or at a weird angle, the lazy vault is perfect for that. So the lazy vault, you're going to pick a side, I'd recommend practicing on both sides, and you're going to use your close hand to initially plant on the object or the rail, and then you're going to use your close leg to the rail to kick over. And then once you kick over, you're going to jump off your opposite leg and then let that leg follow the kick over through, like so. And then you're going to plant your opposite hand once you get your feet over. The main idea with this vault is to focus on being smooth and having control. There's a variety of ways you can come out of this move. You can push out with two hands, or you can keep your momentum moving in the same direction and just focus on coming out and forward again. And the best way to practice this move to increase your flow and coordination is to just practice them consecutively in a row, going back and forth both ways. For our sixth vault, we're going to learn the Kong vault. Now this vault is going to be a little bit harder than all the previous vaults because your feet are coming straight underneath your body so it's going to be a much higher risk of clipping your feet if you don't use proper technique. But the basic Kong vault is just planting with both hands and then bringing both your feet through your arms as you push away. Kong vaults are great for getting lots of power or speed if you need to clear distances with the vault. Um, those especially work best on like ledges or things like that. Um, generally the Kong vault is all about power and getting distance um, when you're doing it. If you don't feel like you have enough flexibility to bring your feet up and underneath you as you're clearing it, you can help facilitate that by actually bringing your hips up higher behind you because what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to bring your feet up higher and then you just let your momentum carry you over so that by the time you bring your feet back underneath you and your hips underneath you, you'll already be past the rail and you don't need to worry about clipping. If you feel like you're gonna clip your feet practicing this move, you can actually practice it a little bit differently by starting out by coming to the side and then slowly working your way more center and also letting one hand come off. Having one hand come off will give you more room for your feet to come through. So you can start it that way and then slowly progress into doing a straight, clean Kong vault. Okay, our next vault is going to be a variation of the Kong vault, which is a cash vault. It's called a cash because it's a combination of a Kong vault and dash vault. But even though it's a combination of those two moves, it's actually easier than doing a dash vault. And for some people, it's even easier than just doing a straight conch. So the cash vault is starting out with the initial positioning of a Kong vault, but then as you bring your feet through, you're going to shoot your feet forward and kind of lean back and then pop your hands up a little bit if you need to, if you can't clear your feet while still holding on to it. And then reaching back with your hands to push off again, almost like you can come out of a lazy vault or a dash vault. Make sure with this one, I would also practice on a wider ledge. Um, you just wanna make sure that as you get your feet through, that you're popping your hips up so that you don't clip your feet and that you're also being aware of your hand positioning, especially if you're doing a jump with your hands, you want to make sure you're coming back down in the exact same spot, not with your palms forward where they might slip off the rail. And if you're leaning back and your hands slip, well then that's bad news. Okay, our next vault is the Tic Tac Vault. Now this is combining two moves, a wall move where you kick off the wall and then any sort of vault, generally a speed vault or a safety vault and you're just going to tack off, off the wall as you bring your body sideways over the object. You can use this move to help change your trajectory and momentum doing a vault by using the wall to push off of it or you can use it to help you clear higher um, obstacles with a vault or you can just do it for fun to add a little bit of style to your flow line. The main thing to focus on with the Tic Tac Vault is that you want to make sure you get a good push into the wall horizontally. 
if you're pushing down too vertically, then your foot can slip and you don't want that to happen or you can trip over the obstacle you're trying to clear. But the easiest way to do it is to do it on flat ground and to just do like you would a normal vault and then just tap your foot on the wall. And then from there you can slowly try and put more and more force into the tic-tac, into the wall, till you can get more power jumping into the vault. So for our last two vault variations, it isn't exactly going over an object using our hands, but it's actually going through or under, and this is called an underbar. A basic underbar is go going to be on an object where you have room to go underneath the bar you're holding from, and then swing your body through and come back out. So the main thing to keep in mind with the underbar is that you want to be make sure that you bring your feet up and you kind of set your hips back a little bit initially so that you can shoot your feet through and aim them and kind of get a little bit of swing as you come through. I would find something to practice this on where you have plenty of space so you don't have to worry about clipping your knees or shins. And then over time you can get a lot better at them where you can underbar through tiny narrow spaces. Our last vault of the 10 beginning parkour vaults is a variation of the underbar which is the 360 underbar. This one is going to be a little bit different. It can be useful in different scenarios where you want to be able to have more control in the way you're getting up and still kind of spin around and land moving forward. So this is basically what it looks like. So basically with the 360 underbar, you're going to be placing one hand on top of it and then your opposite hand you're going to bring underneath and across so that you can twist your body into this position and then from here you're just going to let your jumping momentum keep you rotating and spinning so you land facing forward and can keep going in that direction. Remember with all of these vaults to take them slowly to start off learning slow and in control doing necessary variations to make sure that you don't trip or fall and that over time and with practice you can do them faster and higher and bigger and just have fun with it. So let me know how many of these 10 beginning parkour vaults you can do in the comments and also let me know in the comments if you think there's any beginning parkour vaults that I may have missed and didn't include and I'll be sure to see if I can include those in future videos and tutorials. But otherwise, thank you again for watching and being supporters of my channel. I wish you luck and safe journey in your parkour and free running journey and adventure. And as always, thank you for watching.